Hi folks, Damon here. So today I want to talk about running EMR jobs with Airflow and specifically Amazon managed workflows for Apache Airflow. So back in May, we released uh, Airflow 2.0 on MWAA and I want to show how to run EMR jobs both on EC2 and EKS on top of Airflow. So with EMR on EC2, there's um, you need to have you know a pre-existing VPC and your EMR default roles set up. With EMR and EKS, we're going to assume you already have a virtual cluster and an execution role set up and running. So um, what we're going to do is run jobs on both of those. With EMR and EC2, there is already some EMR operators that exist. So we're going to use the uh, EMR create job flow operator. If I go over here to the uh, Airflow documentation, you can see that there is this uh, create job flow with automatic steps. And what that does is it goes and creates a cluster, uh, runs the job, and then tells EMR to shut the cluster down once the job is done running. So you might use this if you have a job that you run once a day and you just need to spin up that cluster for the time that you're running the job. And then on the EMR and EKS side, there is not native integration with Airflow yet. I've actually got a PR open in the Airflow project for it. Uh, but in the meantime, I've got the code for that PR sitting out here in my personal repository as well in this EMR EKS Airflow 2 plugin. And what we can do is we can just add this uh, repository to our requirements.zip. So you can say EMR containers at and then specify uh, this this uh, repository and that will install uh, this code on that MWAA instance when you bootstrap the instance. So that's EMR and EC2, EMR and EKS. And what we're going to do is we're going to provision this cluster using a CDK, the Cloud Development Kit. So let me walk through that file really quickly. Over here on the MWAA stack, this is a Python CDK code, and I'll just walk through uh, what that code is going to do really quickly. So first, we'll create a VPC just for our Airflow stack. Uh, we'll create a bucket to put our assets into, and we're going to deploy all um, some sample DAGs and our requirements.txt file into that assets bucket or sorry, into that bucket from the assets folder. So you can see there's my DAGs. I've got a couple sample DAGs there and then my requirements.txt file. The requirements.txt is pretty straightforward. It just installs the EMR containers plugin and then the Amazon uh, provider package as well. And our EMR job is fairly straightforward. It's just going to run uh, this you know sample job that calculates pi. We're gonna tell it to run EMR 6.3 and run two M5XL nodes. The EMR and EKS job is pretty straightforward too. We're also going to run this sample pi job. We'll specify some uh, Spark executor configuration to it. And then we have a virtual cluster ID that we're going to get from a connection that we've defined inside of Airflow and a job role that that job is going to execute as. And then we're just going to go ahead and use the EMR container operator to start that job, wait for it to complete, and then shut down the DAG. So that's it. Um, those are those sample jobs. Let's go back to the stack really quickly because there is one kind of unique thing that we're doing as part of the stack. So we uh, provision that bucket, deploy the assets to that bucket. We're creating a service role as well. And inside that service role, uh, we're using the default MWAA policy, but we're also adding in just a couple different permissions we need in order to execute the jobs. So on the EMR container side, we need to, the ability to call start job run and describe and cancel. On the EMR and EC2 side, we need run job flow and then the ability to describe the step in the cluster. And then we also need these pass role actions here in order to run the EMR cluster with these default roles. So those are the only things that we're adding into that service role. And then we create a security group, the login configuration, for MWAA, and then we just use this um, cloud formation environment here in CDK to go ahead and provision our Airflow environment. So we specify the version, where the DAGs live, that where the requirements.txt file lives, and um, what environment class we want to use for the instances for that uh, for that environment. And that's pretty much it. We just go ahead and run CDK deploy with this code that goes and provisions the cluster, and it's going to spit out um, the bucket where we want to put our assets. And then the MWAA URL as well. So if I do a quick S3 LS of that bucket, and what we should see is we should see the requirements file and the DAGs in there. So that's all deployed and ready to go. Now, if we hop back into our 
uh, console here, we can see we've got our Decor Airflow environment with 2.0.2. And if I pop open the Airflow UI, uh, we'll see our two example jobs in there. So there's my EMR and EKS Pi job and the EMR job. I've already run these a couple of times, um, but we'll trigger them again. Before I do, I need uh, to go ahead and create my EMR and EKS connection. So I did that already. And if you look down here, there's my EMR and EKS connection. If I edit that, you can see I've specified my region name virtual cluster ID and job role aren't in there. So once that EMR and ACAS job runs, it'll use those and uh, those variables to run the job. With the EMR and EC2 one, I'm gonna go ahead and trigger this DAG. And what that's going to do, it's gonna run through that code, create a new EMR cluster and uh, schedule the job on that cluster. So if I go ahead and click on the last run here and look at the logs, what I should see is this create job flow. That's the step that's gonna create the cluster. So you can see here, uh, job flow with ID J1Z is created. So if I go back to EMR Studio here and I look at my EMR and EC2 clusters, we can see there's my J1Z PyCalc cluster name that is creating right now. And then if I go back here, the way that this DAG runs is it has one step to uh, create the cluster and then another step to kind of check the job flow and keep an eye on that cluster and see if it's done creating or not. So you can see here it's poking the cluster and it is currently starting. One of the cool things about EMR Studio is you can see both EMR on EC2 clusters and you can see your EMR on EKS jobs here as well. So there's my EMR cluster. And if I click on that, you can see my different jobs here. So I've got a bunch of completed jobs on my EKS cluster. And if I go back to EC2, I can go ahead and launch the application UIs directly from here as well. And I can even do this on uh, completed or terminated cluster. So I can go and I can launch an old Spark history server. And when that pops open, what you get is this uh, you know, Spark UI where you can dig in and look at the job and see how um, see how it worked. And you can do that on the EMR and EKS side as well. So if I click on there and my um, for any specific job, you can actually go there and click launch Spark history server. And again, you get the same thing. There's the Spark job. You can dig in. You can see the executors, all that kind of fun stuff. So the EMR job, uh, let me refresh. I'll go back to the EMR console. You can see there's my PyCalc J1Z cluster starting. And if we look at that, uh, the cluster is set to auto terminate. There's the step that it's going to run. It's just going to run calculate pi and then shut back down. And you can see the two M5 XLs are spinning up there. So that is the EMR on EC2 job run. Now, if we want to run uh, EMR and EKS, let's go back to the DAGs. And I mentioned I already created that connection. So what this is going to do when I run my EMR on EKS pi job, it's going to submit a job to the EMR on EKS virtual cluster. So I'll go ahead, I'll hit trigger here. And if I click on the logs, we'll see a similar kind of thing here. There's only one, um, you know, one uh, task in here, which is just start job. And that's just going to start the job and monitor it until it's done and then raise success or failure. So if I scroll down, you can see uh, start job run success. It created that job in the virtual cluster and it's in a pending state right now. So if I go back to EMR Studio, if I refresh my EMR on EKS cluster here, you can see that now I've got my um, Pi job here. It's been submitted. And uh, like I said, I can go here and I can launch that Spark history server if I want to. Um, but that job should actually complete pretty quickly. So if I go and refresh this, we should see um, that should go from a pending state to a submitted state. So what's happening on the EMR and EKS cluster is it is um, spinning up all the drivers and executors to go ahead and run that job. And that should actually complete pretty quickly here. So let me just do a quick refresh. And you can see it's running right now. And if I go back to the logs here, um, we'll see how often this pulls. Okay, cool. You can see that that's running right there now as well. And we can see in the Spark History server, um, oh, it already completed. So uh, that took nine seconds to go and complete. So that's one of the things too about EMR and EKS is since that cluster is you know ready and waiting, it can make use of that capacity in EKS to go ahead and run that job. And it is super quick, right? So that took uh, a minute to, to spin up and run and it's already already completed. Um, so this is really useful if you're submitting jobs throughout the day and you want you know kind of flexible cluster capacity. And this should represent as uh, finished in Airflow pretty quickly here as well. And so let's see, yep, down there, final state is completed, marking task as success. So if we go back to our DAGs, 
we can see here um, we have three uh, successful runs now. That EMR and EC2 one is still kind of spinning up that cluster. Um, so you know that's useful if you have you know maybe one job that you're running a day you just want to spin up that cluster and uh, run it and shut it right back down. Uh, there are also operators uh, with Airflow where you can submit it to an existing running cluster. So if you have one that is already up and running, you can you can do that as well. So that is EMR on Airflow. Um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today. So yeah, there's the connections. There's running the jobs. I mentioned the uh, EMR and EKS plugin, so you can run that on MWAA uh, just by using the requirements.txt file. So uh, that's it. If you have any questions, uh, you know, let me know, uh, and uh, hope you have a good one. Bye.